My name is Kim Milliken, and we're here at the National Ability Center at our climbing wall, and we're talking about adaptive climbing. Some of the things to consider when you are going to go adaptive climbing is to check and make sure where you're going has worked with people with disabilities before. And that's, um, if you're on your own and you live somewhere where there's a climbing gym and there's no adaptive program, which would surprise me, I would find um, resources around you. So for example, a chest harness. Um, quite a few people know about these. These are available from your standard retailers, but we use them specifically here for people who um, are super strong, have large chest muscles, um, people who are top heavy, people who do not have a waist. So a waist harness is the standard piece of equipment. But if you don't have a waist and you turn upside down, it's not going to hold you. So then we would use a chest harness as well as this and do a three link. So I won't adjust it to fit me, but the chest harness just goes over your chest and that will actually belay people from the chest. Um, that is especially big if somebody doesn't have legs or if, like I said, they don't have a narrow waist or if they just have super strong upper body. Because what will happen is if they go sideways, upside down, we want them safe at all directions. And kids' harnesses are great because they're one piece, which disperses the weight evenly and makes them more comfortable. And we also, the same principle applies because children's heads are the largest part of their bodies and that will keep them belayed at that point. Um, for somebody who doesn't want to go through a chest harness, it can be very uncomfortable, especially for girls. Um, a parachute harness works well, and there are professional companies that make adult full body harnesses as well. Look on Disabled Sports USA, they have a great resource link, um, but they would know.